I want us to call back our minds to when we were looking at these, and again, we didn't work out the answer. What I was just interested in was the process. Now, if I'm trying to choose a new unit, right, that makes this neater and avoids this conversion business, okay, then a sensible idea, a sensible proposal is, why not choose a unit that involves pi? Now, that seems a bit counterintuitive at first because it's like, well, pi is a gross number. Pi is irrational. It's not, even, it's not even irrational. It's transcendental. It's one of the most complicated numbers you could possibly choose. But the reason I'm choosing it is because it has to be there anyway. Do you notice that, right? If you're measuring circles, you cannot avoid pi. It's there whether you like it or not. So being that it's there, why not incorporate it into our calculations? Okay? For instance, see this one over here. We were looking at the, um, the circumference, right? The full circumference is 2 pi times whatever the radius is. Okay. 2 pi takes you all the way around. And if I have some proportion of that, like for example, if I had just pi, that would not be the all the way around. It'd just be halfway. Okay. So what I'm going to introduce is a new way of measurement. And that's what this, um, this pair of diagrams is for. Okay. So if you um, just mimic that diagram over there, but don't put the measurements on it. circle, generic circle, right? and I want to define, so this is my definition, here it comes, right? for what is the size of this angle AOB, right? so AOB, this is my definition, so I'm going to write that, and then I'm going to put some boxes around this in a second, AOB, I want to take it as the ratio between this radius, which is kind of locked in, and then however much of the circumference you've got, the R, okay? So being that it's the ratio, it's going to be, in this diagram, um, the arc, I'm going to call that AB. Right? So I'll call that AB, that arc. And I'm going to divide by the radius. Now, I have two ways to call the radius. Just because I like A's at the moment, I'm just going to call that AO. Right? So this is what I'm defining as the size of that angle. Right? I'm comparing an arc length to the radius of the circle. Now, the genius of this, the beauty of it, that as this circle grows or shrinks, because this is a ratio, this angle will always stay the same. Okay? So for instance, if I went, like I said, and did the entire thing, when, um, don't draw this because it will mark up your diagram, but if I went all the way around, okay, what would the arc length be for that was, is subtended by this angle? It's going to be 2 pi r, isn't it? Because that's what the circumference is. So it would be 2 pi r. But then I'm dividing by, I'm comparing that to the radius, right? So arc length over radius. So that would tell me the whole angle is 2 pi. That's where this comes from, going all the way around. If I say I only wanted to go halfway, so we would call that normally, halfway we would call that 180 degrees. Instead of doing that, well, what arc length will you trace if you go halfway around the circle? Not this far. Pi. It'll only be pi r. Right? But then you compare it to the radius. So pi is the angle that takes you halfway around the circle. Okay? One more time, one more common angle that we deal with. Right? Um, what's a right angle in our terms? It's 90 degrees. Right? How far around the circle does a right angle take you? And the answer is a quarter. Right? So therefore, instead of um, pi r or r, right, I'm going to have pi r on 2. That's how far I've gone around the circle. And I'm going to compare that to R. Does that make sense? Like this here is a quarter of the full circumference. That's why it's not pi on 4, it's pi on 2. And that of course is pi on 2. So pi on 2 is what I'm used to thinking of as a right angle. It takes me a quarter of the way around the circle. Okay. So this is all really nice, but let's generalize this even further. If it's not A or B or O, that kind of thing. Redraw the diagram, but let's label it a little bit differently.
because what we're dealing with is an arc length, right? That's the, that's the key thing here, right? Rather than call it AV, it's a length, so I'm just going to use the letter L for it, okay? And I stylize the L so I don't confuse it with, uh, with a 1, okay? So if I call this the arc length, this of course is just the radius. We, we're used to calling that R from like 2 pi R and pi R squared and so on, right? And if I just generically call this angle theta, okay? That means that by definition, again, so this is, I'm going to put a big box around this in a second. Theta is equal to the ratio between the arc length, which is just L, and the radius, which I'm calling R. Right? So a couple of things leap out at me, right? This is all about, I'll put my boxes around this now. This is all about trying to work out, okay, what's the size of this angle? What's the size of this angle? Okay? But if I come back to the questions we saw before, usually I, I kind of noted the angle. An angle is easy to measure out. What I want is the arc length. So all I need to do to get an expression for arc length out of this is just rearrange, just change the subject, right? If I made arc length, which is L, if I made that the subject, how would I write this thing? I would say L and I multiply both sides by R. And this is the first, inverted commas, formula for what we encounter in what we call radian measure and measuring circles, circle maturation. Okay. This is the formula for arc length, which just jumps out of how we've defined what a radian, what an angle is. Okay. Now, um, the second thing is, what would it mean if I said, like, we're trying to deal with, we said the whole thing is, um, the whole thing is 2 pi, right? So that's like, what is 2 pi? It's a number. It's about 6.28, right? Do you agree with that? So 6.28 takes me all the way around. Now we have a pretty intuitive sense of what like 1 degree is, or what 90 degrees is, and what 180 degrees is. What would 1 radian look like? Now, here's the great thing about it, right? I don't have to guess. I can just say, well, what if that thing is equal to 1? It would equal L on R. What does that tell me? This means that in this case, in this case, if I were to imagine an angle that was exactly 1, inverted commas, radian, that angle will trace out an arc length that is exactly the same as the radius. Okay, I like, maybe you can draw a third circle for me. Um, if I were to have a circle, and I know its radius is that long, then if you can estimate for yourself, how far would you have to go around the circumference in order to get an arc length that's exactly the same length, right? The same, same distance. And the answer is not all that far. About, well, I, I think I'm going a bit too far, actually. If you check, right, how am I going to work out what is the actual size of that angle in all the terms, the degrees terms that I'm already familiar with, right? We have all the tools you need in these kinds of common angles here. Now, let's put some names on these. So, 2 pi, we call this, this is a revolution, right? Pi, that was halfway around the circle. What do we normally call that? Starts with an S. 180 degrees is a is a straight line, right? So we call that a straight angle, right? And of course, pi on two that represents a quarter of the way around the circle, and we call that a right angle, right? Now the thing is, we know the reason why I'm calling your attention to these these names is because you know exactly what each of these is in degrees, right? So this apparently is kind of equivalent to 360 degrees. And this is equivalent to 180 degrees. And this is equivalent to 90 degrees. Now you can take any of these, they'll give you the same conversion. But it looks to me like this is the easiest one. This one has no other numbers involved. Okay? So if pi radians represents a straight angle, how many degrees is that? That's 180 degrees. Right? So I'm going to write it like this. Okay, this is me trying to wrap my head around like what is one radian? Like do I have a picture in my head? Okay. One radian is this geometrically, but pi radians, and I'm going to use the abbreviation rad, I'm going to get rid of it in a second, I'll explain why briefly. Pi radians is the same as 180 degrees. So how do I get one radian out of this? Divide by pi. Just divide both sides by pi. One radian is 180 degrees divided by pi, which from my memory is about 57.3 degrees. You can pop it in your calculator and confirm that. 57.3 degrees. Can you picture 57.3 degrees? Yes. I guess you go to a right angle, you halve it, that gives you 45. Add 
and you go a little bit further. Right? You go a little bit further, which is how I knew. I think I'm, uh, yeah, I'm in the right ballpark. Okay? You can estimate your arc length and your radius, and you should see they're about the same. Okay? So you might like to write here. It's approximately, because someone want to check, I'm not just making that up, about 57.3. Yep. Yeah, 57.3. 